Dear Jeremy, I am sorry to hear you have been sacked. No, really, strangely, I actually am. But you did not give the BBC much choice. You can't whack a member of your own production team in a drunken, foul-mouthed rage, however called the food. When we ended our 10-year feud in a pub last summer, I could tell you were very fragile, both emotionally and physically. Your mother had just died, your marriage had broken down, you had various discomforting health issues, you were smoking and drinking too much, and you were rolling from the N-word scandal that nearly got you the sack nine months ago. You made no secret to me of your loathing of some of the BBC hierarchy. But you felt torn because you loved doing Top Gear. I stumbled away that night, pleased that we had buried the hatchet, but worried that your fuse might blow at some stage. As I told your great friend Gil at a party a few months later, Jeremy seems right on the edge to me. He agreed. So it was really no great surprise to wake up one morning two weeks ago to hear you had erupted. Your mistake was to take out all your angst on a hard-working, loyal Top Gear producer. If you had just whacked me in the head again, as you did at the British Press Awards in 2004, the nation would have risen as one to applaud you. I suspect an OBE might have been in the offing, possibly even an open top bus, ticker tape parade of London. I also think your legal team made a massive tactical mistake. As the only other human being that you have ever punched, I think you could have successfully argued that you hit with such pathetic weakness that it does not actually constitute a punch. As you yourself admitted afterwards, when your third wild blow careered into my head, I laughed and said, is that it? My three-year-old son hits me harder than that. It was, frankly, like being slapped over the face with a wet cod. I deserved your fury the day after publishing compromising photos in the Daily Mirror of you and a lady who was not Mrs. Clarkson. But Oizantuman, the victim of your assault on this occasion, did not, as I am sure you would be the first to acknowledge. The fact he is now being abused and threatened on social media by Top Gear fans is a shameful disgrace, and I hope you denounce the idiots doing it. Just as I am sure you have been denouncing yourself for being an idiot. I don't defend what you did, nobody can defend what you did. But I do know that it happened after one of the worst periods of your life, professionally and personally. And perhaps those around you on the Top Gear team might have done a bit more, to protect you from yourself until you got over it all. Now, it's too late. Your BBC career is over in a pile-up of epic proportions. Top Gear itself may never emerge from the wreckage. And you have got to face up to life in the real world, again. <laughs>